Hi guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel US Army Military. Today I will be taking you how to set up the Patriot missile battery and launcher that I display at the end of the video, I hope you watch it to the end. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. How to set up a Patriot missile battery and launcher. The Patriot missile system has a remarkable goal, it is designed to detect, target and then hit an incoming missile that may be no more than 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters, long and is typically flying at 3 to 5 times the speed of sound. The upgraded Patriot system can also destroy incoming aircraft and cruise missiles. The Patriot missile system has been deployed in many situations because it is able to shoot down enemy missiles scud missiles and protect soldiers and civilians from a missile attack. Patriot missile batteries were activated several times in the Iraqi war and were used extensively in the 1991 Gulf War. In this article, we will look at the technology that allows a Patriot missile to accomplish its goal. Like the Stinger missile and the Sidewinder missile, the Patriot is a guided missile. However, the Patriot is somewhat more sophisticated. In both the Stinger and Sidewinder missiles, the infrared seeker is sensitive to engine heat. A human being is responsible for finding and identifying the target, appropriately aiming the missile so that the its heat-seeking eye can lock onto the target, and then firing the missile. A Patriot missile, instead, depends on radar. The Patriot missile system uses its ground-based radar to find, identify and track the targets. An incoming missile could be 50 miles, 80.5 kilometers, away when the Patriot's radar locks onto it. At that distance, the incoming missile would not even be visible to a human being, much less identifiable. It is even possible for the Patriot missile system to operate in a completely automatic mode with no human intervention at all. An incoming missile flying at Mach 5 is traveling approximately one mile every second. There just isn't a lot of time to react and respond once the missile is detected, making automatic detection and launching an important feature. While the Stinger is a shoulder-launched weapon and the Sidewinder launches from aircraft, Patriot missiles are launched from Patriot missile batteries based on the ground. A typical battery has five components. The missiles themselves, MIM-104. The missile launcher, which holds, transports, aims and launches the missiles, M-901. This part is necessary because each missile weighs almost one ton. A radar antenna, MPQ-53 or MPQ-65, to detect incoming missiles. An equipment van known as the Engagement Control Station, X, houses computers and consoles to control the battery. MSQ-104. A power plant truck equipped with 250 kilowatt generators that provide power for the radar antenna and the X. Since a Patriot missile battery can have up to 16 launchers, and there are also spare missiles to resupply the launchers as missiles are fired, you can see that deploying a Patriot missile battery is not a small endeavor. Each launcher is roughly the size of a tractor trailer rig, as is the X and the power supply truck. There are also operating personnel, technicians, support personnel, fuel for the generators, security forces to protect the battery. Describes a convoy of about 300 vehicles, which included infantry forces, tanks and marines to move a Patriot missile battery to the front lines and make it operational. The deployment of Patriot missiles is not a decision made lightly. In the following sections we will look at each of the different components and then how the system operates as a whole. The Patriot missile defense system consists of four major components the launcher. Configured with four interceptors per launcher for the Pac-1-2 and 16 interceptors per launcher for the Pac-3. The NMPQ-53 phased array radar, designed to track enemy missiles or aircraft, the NMSQ-100 for engagement control station, X. The man in the loop for firing an interceptor, and the NMSQ-24, the 150 kilowatts diesel power generator units. The Patriot Level 1 Anti-Tactical Missile, ATM or Patriot Advanced Capability primarily consisted of software changes allowing for the interceptors to be used to defend against short-range ballistic missiles, SRBMs. Its successor, the Pac-2, consisted of further software upgrades and improvements to the blast fragmentation warhead. The Pac-2 was the first ballistic missile defense system to successfully intercept a hostile ballistic missile during wartime. 
During the 1991 Gulf War, the United States deployed Pac-2 interceptors to Israel and Saudi Arabia to counter the Iraqi arsenal of Scud missiles. The GAO concluded that there was evidence that 9% of the engagements during the conflict could be conclusively considered warhead kills, where there was either evidence of Patriot fragments in the body of Scud missiles or radar evidence of debris from a destroyed Scud. The Pac-3 interceptor differs significantly from the Pac-1-2 interceptors due to its use of hit-to-kill technology. While previous Patriot interceptors used only a blast fragmentation detonation in the vicinity of the hostile target, the Pac-3 hits the target directly and only contains a small high-explosive warhead as a kill enhancer. The interceptor was a direct result of the Extended Range Interceptor errant, program, which developed a hit-to-kill interceptor to compete with an upgraded Pac-2 called the Multi-Mode Seeker MMS. The NMSQ-104X is essentially the brain of the Patriot system. It is the only manned portion of the Patriot batteries, consisting of three, or sometimes four, individuals. The Patriot system is nearly autonomous, with only the final launch decision requiring human interaction. The X has two computer consoles, each displaying a radar depiction of airborne vessels. The tactical control officer sits to the right, the tactical control assistant sits to the left, and the communications operator sits in the back. The tactical control assistant is the actual firing of the interceptors, the tactical control officer approves targets and ensures that allied forces are not targeted, and the communications operator monitors all communication between headquarters and the other batteries. Sometimes a recorder assists the tactical control assistant and records messages from headquarters. So that is it guys for today's how to set up the Patriot missile battery and launcher. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Next episode of my video will be published about other interesting info about the American military, so be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click on the ring button so you will not miss any notification when I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. See you later.